in order to secure the lease, you will pay the owners or owners of the land and the mineral rights what is known as a signature bonus or an agreed amount of money at the time of signing. In addition, once the well starts to produce, the owner or owners will receive a royalty. This is the financial return that the owner receives and is a percentage of the revenue from each barrel of oil or cubic foot of gas that is sold. Remember, traditionally owners do not share in the costs of the development of the field. Of course, anything can be negotiated and agreed to in a lease, but usually the expenses of development belong to the operator. This means that you must have access to sufficient capital to pay for everything to develop the field until production commences and you can finally start receiving income, which can take time. Five to ten years is not uncommon. Of course, if you run out of money and stop work or you break the terms of the lease for any reason, the owners can annul or cancel your contract which can lead to expensive legal battles. In addition to having to become familiar with the above mentioned terms and conditions, you'll also have to follow the rules and regulations of the US or Canadian government regulatory bodies. Called regulatory oversight, these agencies have the right to monitor your drilling activities to ensure that your drilling methods and activities follow approved government agency policies and best practices to maximize efficient recovery of hydrocarbons. For instance, the rule of capture ensures that whoever produces the oil and gas can claim it even though that petroleum might have crossed property lines as it migrated into your well. There are also regulations governing slanted holes or the offset drilling rule so that you aren't tempted to drill into or near someone else's property. In addition, these regulatory agencies can help ensure that the health and safety of the workers and people living near the drilling sites are protected. The governments also set policy to protect the environment and the animals and wildlife that live there. I'm sure all of you are aware of BP's catastrophic disaster in 2010 near the Louisiana coast in the Gulf of Mexico in the United States that resulted in an environmental nightmare that could end up costing BP billions of dollars to clean up. Because well-established safety policies and procedures appear to have been ignored or neglected, which resulted in the deaths of 11 people on the rig floor, the CEO of BP was forced to resign and the reputation of BP as an IOC has been severely tarnished. One cannot easily predict how BP's decision to put profits above safety and the environment will impact this formidable company and its bottom line. Know though that international oil companies, including BP, will study in great detail the series of events that led to the explosion of this deep water offshore well in order to prevent a catastrophe like this from happening again. It will also serve to remind the decision makers, both high and low, that they ignore the health and safety of workers and the environment at the cost of their own economic well-being. That said, just know that the laws governing landowners corrective rights, maximizing efficient recovery of hydrocarbons, and drilling safely to protect health and the environment can be very complicated and involve numerous laws and regulations. We suggest that operators drilling where private ownership exists to secure adequate local legal advice. Once you receive the lease, there are also a number of financial options available to you. If you think there is a possibility of striking oil, you might want to develop the property alone. If financing is tight or costs are unusually high, you might want to take on a partner. 
if you have other pressing obligations and cannot devote time to explore this site, you might want to seek a farm out. This means you let someone else develop the site, but you keep some financial interest. Drilling funds can also be raised from private individuals as limited partners. Outside the United States and parts of Canada, other host countries have their own laws or regulations to govern mineral deposits, and each presents its own benefits, rewards, drawbacks, or dangers. One thing, however, that all host countries have in common is that the mineral rights in these lands belong to the country's sovereign or legal government. These host countries, defined as countries with oil-bearing sedimentary formations under their jurisdictions, control access to all oil and gas deposits within their borders and within certain limits offshore. It is with them that you, the operator, will negotiate and sign any contracts if you want to drill within their borders or their coastal waters. Remember, sovereign states have more powers than private enterprise. By controlling the local courts, these host countries can break and annul contracts legally. Since they make the laws, they can change the laws. Many countries have expropriated or nationalized their oil fields when production finally gets underway and the money is flowing in. So know the history and traditions of the leaders you are dealing with and then analyze and evaluate your risks. Let's look at some examples of how the host country can change the terms to negatively affect you. Maybe under the original agreement, you might have been able to extract 100,000 barrels of oil per day. Suddenly, your limits are lowered to only 50,000 barrels per day. You will have lost half of your income stream, although your costs have remained fixed. In another scenario, the host country might change the tax rules or the reference price, which is the price where the tax rate is applied. Maybe they impose additional tariffs and licensing fees. Many IOCs have suffered these and other illegal acts that have violated international law. These actions, however, are considered a part of the risk in exploring for and producing oil. IOCs are world players and have learned to establish partnerships to share the risks and negotiate wisely to help prevent, advert, or cover possible losses. Fortunately, many host countries honor their agreements. They realize that they need the international oil company as much as the international oil company needs the host country. You might say that the relationship between a host country and an international oil company can be described as both symbiotic and synergetic. Symbiotic because whereas the host country needs the international oil company with its newer technology for the long-term success of its oil and gas industry, the international oil company needs the host country's access to oil deposits. Synergetic because the host country and the international oil company receive more and better results when they work together. A perfect example of this is the UAE. When the government nationalized its oil fields in 1971 and established the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, they gave ADNOC only 60% ownership and allocated the International Oil Company partners, their original concession holders, the right to retain ownership in the other 40%. Today, Shell, ExxonMobil, BP, and Total each own 9.5%, while Partex owns 2%.